Hey boy, come on. What's your name? Siddharth. Siddharth. Okay, fine. Which class you are studying? Fifth. Fifth. Okay. I will show you a small demo experiment in physics. You love physics? Yes. Very good. What is this? This is a basketball. Mm. I hold it like this at a height. And if I release my hand, what happens? It will go down. It will go down. It will fall down. And after falling down? It will come back up. It will come back. But did you note, it didn't come to the old height? Mm. This was the initial height. Mm. But when I release it, it comes only to this. Yes. Some height it lost. It lost some energy. Mm. It lost some velocity. It lost some momentum. Momentum means mass into velocity. Momentum means? Mass into velocity. Mass into velocity. So, this has got a momentum. Hmm. All it? Okay. Hi. Okay. You know, if this tennis ball yes. is allowed to fall, it comes to a lower height. Yes. It loses momentum, mass into velocity. Yes. Yeah. So, what you are going to do is, your name is Siddharth. Correct. Right. So, you are going to hold the ball like this. Okay. And when I say one, two, three, hmm. at three instant, you must release the ball. Okay. Not one second earlier, not one second later. Okay. This is called instantaneous in physics. Okay. You got the point? Okay. So, now, hold it high. No, not you. Not you. One, two, three. Yeah, it was fantastic. So, hold it. Now, yeah, madam, yes. same story for you. Hold it like that. One, two, three. Oh, there is a lot of physics in you. Come on. Now, what you will be doing is, you hold the ball horizontal and there are lines in it, you see? So, we will do one thing. We will uh, find out there is a hole in it. Can I find the hole? Can you spot yeah, me? I think so. Ah, yeah, it is. So, you hold it like this. And then, Madam, you place the ball over it. Now you see what happens. When I say one, two, three, you are simultaneously releasing it. Yes. Fine? The ball travels down. The small ball also travels down. Both of them have got mass. Which is the mass you want? Basketball or tennis ball? Basketball. Basketball. So this will go down. It will have more momentum. Okay. Got it? This tennis ball also will follow. This guy will sit on it and travel all the way. Both are free falls. Now, as this ball touches the ground, the fellow will rebound. Now the tennis ball is going down, basketball is going up. This is massive body. It has got more momentum. It has got less momentum. They will hit. That's a head-on collision. Don't be in the yes, tension. Yes. Relax. Yes, yes. Okay? And, you know, this, some momentum, it will pass on to this tennis ball. Hmm. And it will lose some momentum. And let us see what happens. Hmm. For example, Siddharth, this is a truck. Okay. I'm traveling in a truck. Okay. This is Siddharth motorcycle. Okay. You are coming in this direction. Hmm. My truck comes and hit on you. Hmm. And now, what will happen to you, you know, you can see. Hmm. Okay? But then, we have to take some conditions. This has to be vertical, perfectly vertical. This ball has to be perfectly over it. Okay? Yes. Then let us see what happens to the ball. Right? I am going to say that. Okay. Be smart. One, two, three. Boy! So what happens to the motorbike? Phew! Phew! And where is it dark? So, momentum. This had larger momentum, that had lesser momentum. So this is M1, that is M2, beginning. But after collision, some momentum was given to that. So because it got some momentum, its mass cannot change, so its velocity changed a lot. So it jammed away. That is why when you have an accident between a truck and a motorbike, motorbike is thrown away. Get the point? When the, when the lock, large electric train comes and hits a car, which will be thrown away? 
the uh, the car. The car will be thrown away. Hmm. See that? So this is called total momentum is always conserved. Ladies and gentlemen, this is called conservation of momentum. Momentum before impact equals momentum after impact. Momentum after, after, impact. after impact. Total momentum is always conserved in all collision process in the universe. This law is strictly obeyed. This is called law of conservation of momentum. One way of explaining the law of conservation of momentum is using Newton's second law equation. Force applied DDT of P. P relates to momentum. So if F is zero, P remains constant which implies law of conservation of momentum for closed systems where forces do not act from outside. The analogous form of Newton's second law in rotational mechanics is tau equals dl by dt. Tau refers to the torque acting on the system and L refers to the angular momentum. So if tau is zero, that is the torque applied is zero, L is conserved. That means angular momentum is conserved in systems on which the external torque is zero. One way to demonstrate this is using a cycle wheel. This is a wheel typical of a cycle. The cyclist when he is riding on the cycle you will see he is balanced. He doesn't fall. But if the cycle slows down and comes to rest his cycle will fall. So unless it has got a stand Cycles cannot be put to rest. So all cycles have got to stand. Otherwise, we put the cycle there and go away. So under what conditions the cycle holds like this and under what condition it falls? See, if you look at this typical wheel of a cycle, we, we recognize this is the axle and somewhere here will come the center of mass or center of gravity or the whole structure. So the mass of the cycle mg will be applying a force downwards. So this force exactly as I indicated with my finger the force is directed downwards and this is the point of support about which it can rotate. So because of the torque R cross F. What is R? R is the distance from this string to the center of gravity. So R cross F will give a torque and the cycle will force down. So, okay. Now if I want to be in equilibrium, I have to apply a force upwards. Now this finger which I am having here holding applies again a torque in the other direction. So that is why the cycle is holding. But when the cyclist is on, when the cyclist is moving in a cycle, I can't grab like that. Now watch. What I am doing is, I am going to rotate the wheel at a fast speed. As if the cyclist is pedaling and he is going. So watch this. Watch this. Cycle is very fast. Now I remove my hand. Cyclist is not falling. That is, when the external torque is zero, the angular momentum is conserved. What is the angular momentum? When the cycle is rotating, the angular momentum vector acts 
in this direction as you can see in the figure force I am applying the torque is R cross F and this is where the angular momentum comes so rotating wheels because I leave my hand free the torque is zero and L is conserved this is a beautiful way of demonstrating how angular momentum conservation is explained with a cycle wheel. One consequence of this is the cycle wheel rotates in the same plane. As you can see, when it rotates fast, it is in the same plane. Now, this explains how the planets around the sun are going in a plane. Now, I can imagine the sun and the sun and the earth a system consisting of the sun and the earth let us see um, okay I, I i will put this place as the sun okay let us assume that somewhere here is the sun and now i am putting the earth on the orbit i have magnets here so i have put it on the orbit so this is the sun earth system and now I can rotate so the earth goes round and round the sun but it always keeps the same plane why because if you look at the picture correctly the sun and the earth the, the distance r is this the force acts along this line and the force f and r are in the same direction r is in this direction the line along which and F is also these are all called central forces and because of this R cross F becomes zero and when R cross F is equal to zero angular momentum is conserved so the plane in which the earth goes round and round the planet is also remaining constant see what a great implication law of conservation has got on the moment of heavenly bodies the same reason same reason for electrons going round and round in the orbits so basically conservation law of angular momentum says that when external torque is zero angular momentum is conserved we have seen already Two conservation laws, conservation of momentum, conservation of angular momentum. The third one which follows is conservation of energy. Total energy of a system always remains constant. This is also one of the fundamental laws of physics. Here I have two balls suspended by strings. They are actually working as pendulums. I have other two pendulums in stock. I can release them, but they are of different length. I have chosen two pendulums of same mass, same length, so that they will have same period. The period of oscillation of a simple pendulum capital T equals 2 pi into root of L by G. L comes in the equation. G refers to acceleration due to gravity. So since these two pendulums are hanging in Earth's surface, they experience same G. So the period of oscillation depends only on the length. Now I have chosen the length as the same. That means the period of oscillation of the two pendulums is the same. So if I allow them to oscillate, they will always oscillate in phase the same time. So I have adjusted the length such that these two pendulums will oscillate in phase. That is, they take the same time. 
So here are two pendulums of same length, therefore same period and reciprocal of period is frequency. So these two are two oscillators of same frequency. Now the energy of an oscillating body like this, any harmonic oscillator is given by the formula energy 2 pi square m nu square a square m refers to the mass nu refers to the frequency and a refers to the amplitude so if you have two pendulums which have got same mass and same frequency the only variable is amplitude and so I can take in this particular experiment demo E proportional to A square M and U being constant. So the energy of the oscillator in my case is a function of amplitude only. Otherwise both the pendulums have got the same properties. Now this means if I oscillate then the two may differ only in amplitude. So when one oscillates with an amplitude, its energy is proportional to A square because frequency nu and mass m both are constant. Remember E is equal to 2 pi square m nu square A square. So the energy of this pendulum this pendulum, both of them are only amplitude functions. So when it oscillates with an energy, the amplitude is an indication of their energy. If it oscillates with large amplitude, it has got large energy. Small amplitude, small energy. Zero amplitude, no energy. So these are two oscillators, let me say A and P. I am going to pump in energy to A, which means I am going to give an energy to A pendulum, this A. It oscillates with energy, but then you will see this also will start oscillating because they are connected, they are coupled to pendulums. There is some way in which the energy can leak through. So if I oscillate this pendulum, this also will pick up oscillations. Let us try that. So I have to oscillate one of them in a plane. That's it. Now watch. This also picks up. This picks up the amplitudes. And now when this has got maximum amplitude, this is virtually stopped. Now this gets energy. It goes to maximum amplitude. And when it is maximum amplitude, this almost stops. And now you see, see they are handing over the energy to the other one. Now A is oscillating with an energy. Now A gives the baton to B. B picks up oscillations. Now B slows down and then A picks up. What does this mean? If the amplitude is maximum, then it has all the energy. As the amplitude decreases, its energy decreases and this energy increases. So, once given an energy, it gives energy to the other system. But E1 plus E2, that is A1 square plus A2 square is always a constant. This proves the total energy of the system is constant and once energy is lost by pendulum number A, pendulum A, that will be the energy gained by the pendulum B and vice versa. This is a beautiful proof for conservation of energy. I now will add one more pendulum to the scenario. Now there are three pendulums. I told you I have our pendulums in stock. Now let me call the names now A, B and C. All the three pendulums have got same mass same length and therefore 
its frequency will be the same. So all of them, when left free oscillations, will have the same energy. But I can control the amplitude. Now A, B, C. I am going to oscillate A and C. Both of them, I am going to give them energy. Remember, amplitude is an indication of the energy. Now, I am going to oscillate A and C. Remember, B is at rest. B's energy is going to be zero. A and, B will, A and C will have energy. But, being coupled, this can also take the energy from A and C. Now, let us see what happens. A and C oscillates. Closely watch. B picks up the oscillations and the energy of A and C decreases. But then B starts losing the energy and A and C starts picking up the energy. So total energy always remains constant. This is again a beautiful demonstration. E1 plus E2 is going to be E3. So this is a beautiful explanation of conservation of energy. For a closed system, energy always remains constant. Participants of the system may exchange energy, but total energy remains constant for a closed system. Now, so in the universe, whenever some energy is lost at some place, energy gained at another place, energy lost will be equal to energy gained, and that is a wonderful law behind physics, which is known as the law of conservation of energy. Thank you.